Yeah, dude. Come on. Come on. Hell yeah, dude. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> it. Come on. Come on. Come on, dude, you got this. You're on it. A little higher, a little higher. Come on, Neil. It's a hole. There it is. It's done. Nice. Dress better, God. <laughs> this is fancy, guy. I'm wearing dress blacks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know about fashion, but fashion. Uh, high fashion. Clearly not. Mm -mm. All right, welcome into the new series we are super excited about called The Anatomy of the Climb. We wanna look at some of the climbs that we do, that our friends do, and we wanna break it down having two like very different perspectives. Uh, we can talk about some of the movements and styles and techniques. Whereas I can talk about, you know, what muscle groups are being used or what tension we're creating in some of the actual like human anatomy and physiology. Yeah, the purpose of this is basically because we want to incorporate more climbing into the channel since we are both climbers ourselves anyways, um, in addition to our normal content, of course. And because we just thought it'd be fun to discuss climbing in sort of this unique way. So yeah. Um, the climb we're going to look at is Carnivore. It's a V8 in Flagstaff, Arizona, specifically the Priest Draw area. Um, and the reason I chose this climb is because there's a lot of moves um, and a lot of different beta you can do. And it's sort of so it's sort of a technical climb in a way, but it's also pretty powerful. As you can see, there's a lot of there's some big moves. Um, so it's just kind of an interesting climb to watch and there's a lot to, we can talk about with it. So we're going to break it down here in a second and um, get to it. We'll get started. Sweet. All right. All right. So the first part here, you can see our good pockets and good feet to start with. And I immediately go to a pretty small, but in cut uh, pocket, it, but it is definitely small. It's too small for more than two fingers. But you can see I like stack three fingers in there and that definitely made it feel more secure than just having two, just hanging off of two. So I don't know why that is, but it just felt better. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that's, that's obviously totally fine to do. Um, yeah, you're stacking those fingers on top of each other, but that's actually gonna support the fingers and you're getting more of the finger flexors involved. So anytime you can do that, you're gonna provide more structural integrity as well. But yeah, having them stacked on top, if that's what allows you to fit, perfectly fine. All right, well, let's look at the next move. So it's this weird heel. Very weird heel. And toe cam thing. So the reason I did that is uh, because that heel, you could probably tell it looks a little bit awkward. Some people do it slightly differently. They're able to cam their toe, um, but that just didn't work for me. Maybe my foot size or something or a bad technique, I don't know. Um, so I used this right toe and cammed it into a pocket down there to sort of press on it and put more weight onto the left heel and that helped it feel more secure. Yeah, and this is one where, like, so typically obviously your heel hook's gonna be a lot of uh, hamstring use, but this with the amount of external rotation we have, a lot of that force is gonna end up going into the, the glute muscles to try and help stabilize and pull up. And, and that's where like, yeah, like our butt strength is helpful. And if you're not training any of that to especially have your, your glutes work with your core, you're gonna run into trouble. Like if we watch how we pulls to the next one, you'll see his hips get closer to the wall and the coordination of that movement is gonna be from the glutes and the core, like pulling him up into it. So just even that little bit of movement he's using the core and the glutes and in this position instead of the hamstring as much it's definitely going to be more glutes and that glute med muscle just super strong butt you know? yeah just <laughs> gotta work the booty <laughs> um yeah I, speaking of this next move you can see i go left hand to another small pocket it's very similar size to the right hand that i'm on um, but slightly wider and so enough that i could actually get four fingers in there and crimp the very edge of it instead of using it as just a pocket, like an open-handed pocket to hang from, 
credit to our friend Bailey for pointing out that <laughs> crimp beta. He's the uh, the crimper of the group. Of course, <laughs> Bailey would find uh, a pocket and turn it into a crimp. Of course, you know? yeah, definitely. <laughs> he crimps slopers and pinches. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it I mean, worked. I, as Bailey would say, "Wait, can can you just crimp it?" Yeah, just full crimp it. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it works pretty well for him. Yeah, there you go. And in this instance, it definitely worked for me. So um, I had originally done this climb with an open hand on the left hand, and then I switched to the crimp, and it felt way more secure, um, which we'll actually see when we look at a different video of me doing this move at a different time. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I mention this is because it makes this next move much easier. So then there's your also more traditional, like, uh, hamstring use with that the right toe goes into that so the the toe down so you're getting the calf and you're getting the hamstring help creating that tension with the core um, so more you think that more traditional kind of like toe or heel hook yeah you can like see my I don't know if I can go back here yep you can see when I switch to that right toe right toe and go you can see my like knee like rotate in oh, like yeah, that. that on. Oh yeah. And I'm like mm -hmm. pressing really hard with my toe and like definitely feel all my like calves and everything engaged pretty hard on that one. So yeah, and two things happening with that that's actually really cool is if you think about the, the hand position right now with your left hand facing in more, your right knee dropping in more is engaging those adductors. So you're actually creating a little more compression. So that's why that kind of drops in for, that's one reason. The other reason, which is pretty natural, is just instead of just using your hamstrings to hold yourself onto the wall in this position, you now get to engage those additional adductor groups. So you're just firing off more muscles to help keep you stable as you go through that position. So it, it, it looks great to me, like especially with that hand position, to get that little bit of internal rotation and adduction of the leg. Let's check out the next move, um, which is just me trying to find my feet here. I find a good <laughs> left foot and then come into that left hand pocket. So um, again, in, an, in another video that we'll check out in a minute, I do the same move, but I use a right foot and then I go out left hand to the same pocket and actually cut feet and I couldn't hold the, the tension there and just my feet just blow off and you know I could still hold it because you're on kind of jugs here but uh, it just was way less smooth and then on this attempt I used left foot and then I'm pulling really hard with my right hand mm -hmm. and that seemed to make it much more stable and then I could obviously go pretty statically to this next move so it was interesting that I mean, I guess that's kind of basic climbing technique in a way, but you don't always yeah. think of this stuff when you're when you're actually on the on the wall. Yeah, sometimes you're just thinking of not falling. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we bring up the anorexic climb and we yeah. can see the difference there? Yeah. So here's so... this is from a previous trip at the end of the trip, and I was much more tired at this point, and I didn't have my beta dialed, but. So there's anyways. your crimp, you got the foot, yeah. you got the hand, and you're about to go out to that yeah. hand, right? And I'm like, where are my feet? Kinda where are my to feet? It out. Yeah, there's the opposite foot, and, and then there I was cut. The, the cut, yeah. Yeah. So obviously just worse technique there. Any climbing coach would have told you to use your left foot instead of the right foot like I did, but you know. Yeah. We're just going, we're learning as we go there here. Was. Sometimes I don't always climb so smart, you know? You know, this is going to come up at some point, but this is one of the reasons why recording yourself climbing is not just an ego thing. You can use this purely for beta and to t like help teach yourself better movement. Because if sometimes when you're climbing, you're like, what happens when you came off? You're like, I actually have no idea what I just did. Well, if you're recording yourself, you can actually look at that and you can see, oh, I probably had the wrong foot there. So you can use like recordings and videos of yourself climbing, not just for like to stroke your own ego, um, but you can use it to teach yourself. It's a fantastic training tool and, and that's what coaches use all the time, so. Um, next part is kind of cool. You have to get a, I was able to keep my left foot on here and uh, not cut, which was nice. And then get this real high right foot, which is above my hands even. And then you can see me kind of wiggling it on there and then rotating into it. So the reason it took me a second to find that foot is because I wanted to make sure it was on there good so that when I rotate it out, it would stay on there and I could press. Um, and then you can see me really tweaking my my left arm as I go for that next <laughs> weird, weird move. Yeah, which, I mean, 
I, certain things just prompt other things we've talked about before, like the rule of seven, like this is potentially a hard position on the shoulder and trying that move like over and over and over again on the shoulder, probably not the safest thing, but with good feet and that next really good hold, you know, as long as you're not spending too much time in that position, you're okay. But yeah, definitely kind of tweaky there. Um, and then I'm able to finally get that good right hand, go out to this little intermediate. So getting that good right hand lets me unweight the left hand, go to this little intermediate. And then here I go, pow, pow pop out to a jug. And so this is where like those hands honestly line up so perfectly because you're pulling in towards each other. Cause you can see like right before that, um, that right hand is facing in, the left hand is facing in. They're facing together. So if you look at like the position of your shoulders too, like you're kind of at like 45 to 60 degrees away from like the front of your body. So out to here, which is like a really good position for your, your shoulder now, not like it's in this weird and kind of pinchy position. So you're also just setting yourself up on that in a really healthy shoulder position. So I, it's gonna feel super secure. Pressing into the toe there, the toe like kind of squishes, my leg straightens a little bit as I weight it, which allows me to bump in right hand for the intermediate, which is important for this next move that's about to come up, which I'm sure you'll have something to say about, but um, yeah. yeah. That's because we just get to see Bailey on the next move, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why it's important, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I bump into this intermediate and then you can see oh, my left hand is. shovel, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> this, the wide angle Rear. camera lens, probably not the most flattering angle, but you know, it's okay. Dude. <laughs> He's actually like the leanest guy I've ever seen. It just doesn't look like it in this shot. Hey, wait, that's what you said about me last week. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was wow. just trying to stroke your ego a little bit. I need it sometimes. He doesn't do well on camera unless I compliment <laughs> him. Yeah, I have to warm up to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you see me, I'll just go back real quick, but you can see me shuffle my left hand up. So right hand comes in, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Oh yeah. So the reason I do that is because I'm about to go for this hold. And like you were saying earlier, it's easier to hold stuff when your shoulders are, or when your hands are kind of like facing each other yep. in that stable position. And so if, if, so this is how I want to be. If I hadn't shuffled my hand, it would have been like this more. Yeah. And I actually tried that move like that because I didn't want to do that hand shuffle thing. And I just came off when I went for that hold because it was just weird to hold the your feet cut and it's yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. A much less uh, stable position. So, Bam, pause, pause, pause. Um, yeah. yeah, see, exactly. Because like he said, if his hand was still down low, all that pressure would probably be just on the index and maybe middle finger because it wouldn't be opposing it as well. But now like shoulders are in a great position, the hands are opposing each other more. So, I mean, that's kind of micro beta right there, but that's awesome because that little rotation um, puts the shoulders in a better position, puts the hands in a better position, and then you're gonna get to use more of those finger flexors and just allow you to like hold that cut way, way better. Yeah, you can see my both arms are in that great position. Once again, mm -hmm. that really stable. So I, that's why I can cut the feet and then just kind of chill there for a little bit. Um, I also just want to point out Bailey's face right now is fantastic. Got it. <laughs> He's so psyched. Thanks for the support, dude. <laughs> so my legs swing over here and then I stab that foot. Um, so definitely more like, I see videos of super strong climbers where- Way too far oh, I went way too far, my bad. Rookie. It's okay. Um, he just wants to watch himself. Super, again. <laughs> I see videos yeah. of super strong climbers where they just like, it's like their legs just weigh nothing and they can just like, they're just like whoop, they just bring them up as if it's nothing. And you here you can see that I like, I catch this big hold and my legs swing over and I sort of try to just go for the that right foot all in one fell swoop, mm -hmm. but I don't have enough momentum to do it really mm -hmm. and enough solid pull, I guess, to do yeah. it. So I, my legs come back down and then I swing back up into it. Um, but I don't know if there's something that I should be training to maybe better control my legs. No, I think the, it's just that you're just really weak. So that's okay. Yeah. So I should quit climbing. You should just quit climbing. Okay. All right guys. Well, that's the video. Um, yeah. I'm going to stop climbing and I guess I'll just see you guys never. Thanks for making me real quick. We appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Thanks. Now um, we can finally do videos of Jason climbing. <laughs> so, I mean, in this case, like it could be really either, like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a core issue. Um, it could be upper extremity as well. Cause like how secure do you feel on that is going to translate to how well you feel 
getting that big pull up because if you carry too much momentum to try and like swing your foot up that very first time, you're gonna have to hold even harder on that left hand. Whereas if you let it kind of like you did, you kind of go for it, but it wasn't like super aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, you don't pull like, so right here, see how you're, you're not allowing your whole body to move up as much because you're not pulling as much on your right hand. You would need to pull up harder on this right hand to get that foot to catch, but it probably felt more secure to you to stay in that shoulder position because you see your shoulders don't move. Yeah. So if we kind of watch just that little part again, once we catch that, the shoulders like don't move anymore for that little section. So you're just, you're stabilizing with your shoulders because that lets you feel more confident on those two grips. So yeah, like maybe um, a little bit more core, a little more shoulder strength, but really that's just where you felt comfortable and stable. And then you can see once you, you readjust your hand and see how now your shoulders change. Yeah. Now you're underneath it more because you've, you've stabilized through your hands. So you get that little transition of your shoulders, stable, 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 drop, readjust. Now you pull up and under. Mm. So it was probably you trying to establish this grip rather than just throw for this and pop off of that like left or right hand. And then toe hook. swing a toe hook up there. This is why Flagstaff is awesome. Uh, Pre-straw is insane. Roof climbing is amazing because you get to do feet first finishes all the, finishes all the time. <laughs> it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, we're gonna take you there. Such a cool like setup though yeah. with that that compression the bicycle move is so cool because that that compression of the right toe like allows you to hold that position and that swing or that little body position change even better as you kind of lower yourself back in. So right now we're creating this good line of force where that toe um, is pulling like solidly against that hold. But then you're going to sink down into it as you go for that next hand. So that changes, that line of force changes. And by having your right foot on this still, you can push here, which is going to keep this line of force stronger and allow you to stabilize with that foot better um, as that force changes. If you didn't have that foot um, on there to hold and create that opposition, as you dropped down through here, there's a chance right there your foot could have just blown off unless it's just on like a mega chip there. I can then take my right foot off and get an even better toe hook and then give her the old reach around up to the top of the bolt or the roof. I think the last thing I wanted to mention with this thing is just we have a video of my friend Richie doing the same climb, filmed in a somewhat similar manner. Richie's also, so I'm about 6'2"-ish, um, and uh, I don't know what that is in in metric. Tall. <laughs> Two meters. <laughs> Richie is like 5'9", I believe, so he's a little bit shorter, um, which is also going to affect his beta, as we'll see. Which, let's... Um, you know, anatomy, longer lever arms, you're not going to be as powerful unless you train that. Shorter lever arms, being a shorter person, you will be more powerful because you don't have to move that, that like center of mass around as much. So you're saying that short climbers have a built-in advantage and tall climbers have a built-in advantage. Correct. Ah, interesting. That's actually really interesting for people that like uh, if they're like shorter and they automatically limit themselves thinking like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to reach anything. I'm gonna suck at climbing. It's not necessarily yeah. true. Yeah. You do have your own advantage. Um, all right, so here's Richie crushing it. Oh, what did I just Wow, do? you did break it. I You're broke not it. Good at Sorry, guy. She's Louise. All right. That's what happens when you click off of things. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so he goes to this first pocket. He does the three fingers too. Stack it. He doesn't care about the four finger crimp on this one. He just- it's Three finger crimp. Though. Yeah. He, yeah, he did it more open hand a little bit, I think. He's trying to figure out just like I was. He, okay, he does this crazy, like, he just immediately, before he goes to left hand, remember I got that good left foot and then came statically to this. He just swings his feet over. So he feels really confident in that left hand. So he's really not waiting. He's not able to take weight off of his body with his foot at this point. No. In fact, just, by pressing on the foot, he's pressing down he's, into his And so his he's hand. putting more pressure into his right hand yeah. now. Yeah, I actually tried using this foothold and it didn't work for me. So I had to do it a different way. And then he goes to the same hold. So he actually bumps out left to a different hold. 
And then that was a cool. But you see, it didn't look like right he used there. that like until it sank into it because it kind of moves. So he puts it in and um, like the left, and watch how he, when he like kind of moves, it, it the foot shuffles. See, it was barely even. See, yeah, he's like not even using that left foot very <laughs> yeah. much. <laughs> Doesn't matter when you're super strong. Yeah, guy. he just kind of put it there and like almost like flagged against it. So totally different beta here. I mean, obviously, I ne- I couldn't use this l- super high left foot like he's using. But you'll see the advantage of being able to use that foot, um, I was using the lower foot, is here. Bam, he goes to that good right hand and he's, he doesn't cut feet like yeah. I did, yeah. which is and pretty cool. And so that's why he can then like swing his legs up because he's already in control on that hold. Yeah, which, so let's see, let's watch him real quick. I believe it's right, yep, so he's yeah. just right into it. Yeah, he's so he's already stable. Right, so he goes from that being out left, feet out left, to feet out right, just mm-hmm. very casually. Whereas I cut feet, had to reset, and then swing up to that next toe. Yep. So that was the anatomy of the climb, part one. Um, hopefully part one of a long series where we do this for lots of different videos. Uh, so if you enjoyed this, uh, make sure you are subscribed, hit that like button, make a comment, and uh, we'll, we'll keep it going. Yeah, if there's any particular climbs that you guys want us to analyze, maybe you can suggest suggest some in the comments um, and we can do that too. We don't always have to just do videos of us. Yeah, we do. I mean, all right, yeah. yeah, we do. All right, yeah, never we mind. Do. Yeah. <laughs>